Um, so we're just going to, I'm just going to ask a couple of warm-up questions um, to get us all used to talking to each other and okay. make sure everything's technically okay. Um, Maggie, can you tell us the date today? Uh, today is October, uh, the date today is October 30th. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, and you've already given your name, so we have that. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, and, and give us your address or your location. Our address here in Gold Hill is 390 Hill Street. Okay, and uh, how long have you lived here? We how bought the house about 14 house? years ago, mm -hmm. 14 or 15 years ago, from her parents. This is the house that Maggie grew up in. Oh, how cool is that? Yeah. yeah. And where, were you in the mountains before that, or in Gold Hill before that? Before that, we were in North Glen. Mm -hmm. um, so it was kind of a, we uh, left a four-bedroom brick house with a two-car garage for an 800-square-foot cabin in the mountains with no closets. <laughs> <laughs> so you're downsizing. Yeah. <laughs> However, this was the house that I grew up in, and um, so it, for me, that? it was coming back old home link yeah, um, I'm noticing you keep there you a couple times you've looked at Angie and now you have to pretend like she's not there okay, okay. sorry yeah. we're looking at me over there. We're, you don't want to look at yeah. me look above my head look over to the okay. side look at each other but she's she's a ghost okay <laughs> okay. Um, okay first of all have you ever been through a fire or evacuation before Yes. Um, I don't remember what year it was. But Sorry. We've yeah. been through a fire. Oh, yeah. This, uh, okay. This, this is, is our second fire. Right. This is not our first evacuation. Uh, during the Sugarloaf Fire, which is right across the canyon there, uh, we were house-sitting a house for a local musician, and the fire came within oh, a quarter mile of that house. We had to sneak in the back way because they had already closed the canyon. And that was different because we had to go through a stranger's house looking for what might be of value and loading it up and dragging it out. And then we came up to Gold Hill and basically watched the uh, bombers dropping slurry down in the area we had just left for a couple of hours. And I think the next day we were able to go back and put their stuff back mm -hmm. in their house. But, mm -hmm. Yeah, it was the second big fire that we've been through. And as I recall, they were a little um, disgruntled by the things that we chose to save for them. <laughs> um, yeah, well, and we weren't sure. We tried to get the picture albums. Um, he actually is a musician. He um, had won a couple of gold records, I think, and so we were going through their closets trying to get find those things for them. But, yeah, oh, sorry. <laughs> She's a spirit. Angie's gonna have to come uh, sorry, Angie. Okay. Uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> you can pull up a chair or something. I'm going to ask you a question. Are we rolling? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, what, do you, what do you take from a stranger's house? Well, we uh, found photo albums, uh, original manuscripts of uh, music, like Maggie said, some gold records. Um, videos of their baby, you know, the first few days, uh, it was just crazy. And that time we didn't have much time. So we were going through a stranger's house at high speed, <laughs> looking for whatever uh, we could possibly come up with. So. And, and why was the owner disgruntled? What did he think you should have taken? I, I don't know. I can't answer that. I can't remember why he, <laughs> okay. uh, the owner was disgruntled, but um, I do kind of remember thinking, wow, you know, we we were caretaking your house. We there, there was a fire. We didn't have a lot of time to think. I do remember being on the phone with them at, at some point, and, and they did say, you know, be sure and get the records and, and the photo albums. But again, we were in a stranger's house, and um, when you're caretaking someone else's house, it's sort of like, yeah, you're in their house, but you try not to be too invasive. Right. Um, and you asked, uh, had we ever been in a fire before? And I do want to say that when I was 28, um, everything I owned was packed in the back of a truck. I was driving from San Francisco to Colorado back home, um, and my truck caught on fire and everything I owned burned. 
But the difference is I was 28 and I really didn't have anything. I mean, I had furniture, I had clothes, I had mementos from San Francisco, my adventures there. But um, it wasn't like we were as invested as we were um, a month and a half ago when the Labor Day fire hit. Oh my gosh, you lost everything. It's horrible. <laughs> um, yeah, it was horrible, but you know, it was nothing compared to what some of my friends yeah. uh, recently lost. Um, All right, well, let's talk about the, the recent fire and we'll start at the beginning. Um, See, I know uh, some people didn't get the reverse 911 call. Were you one of those? Did you get a call? I don't think we got the first round of them. Of we the 911 had, calls. Oh, the 911 calls, yeah. We didn't get the uh, first round of them, but we heard from a bullhorn on Main Street. We got the initial evacuation fairly quickly. Um, that was, I don't know, around 11 o'clock, I guess. And did you... Did you heed the evacuation notice at 11 o'clock? Well, when we got the notice, the first thing we did was load up all the things that we had discussed in the past, uh, the paintings and, uh, you know, um, photos and, and financial records and things like that. We did that right away, immediately. And once we were loaded up, we it turned out we had quite a bit of time. So then we started doing mitigation work around here. My son and I were mowing the grass out in the meadow, and some neighbors were cutting some trees behind the house. So we actually had hours and hours, uh, because at the time, the fire didn't look like it was coming here. It was hooking around to the south and east, mostly. But at the same time, you don't want to wait till the last minute, as it turns out. <laughs> right. Yeah. Um, so when did you actually leave? Well, what time did you leave? Um, when, uh, when we actually left was, uh, I believe, I left around 4 o'clock. Um, we, uh, we kept, uh, what I did when I first saw the fire um, in the early morning, it was way down in the canyon. And so I started taking pictures. I took pictures like every 15 minutes. And so I have a, a, a series of pictures uh, that has the fire marching up the canyon. Um, I began to get kind of nervous when I realized that the Gold Hill Inn um, was canceling all of their, their party and sending all the musicians home. It was at that point that um, we really realized that we needed to at least start the evacuation process. Um, so uh, by 4 o'clock, uh, the sky, according to my pictures, um, was brown. Uh, there was the the whole area in Gold Hill was uh, brown, and ash was falling, and it was really pretty smoky all around our house. You could see that there was a fire coming from uh, from the west, and um, and I became very nervous and uh, started begging my son and husband, "We need to go. We need to go." Uh, the way I remember it. Dave turned to my son and said, let your mother out, because my son was parked behind my car. <laughs> my car was already packed to the gills, and I mean packed to the gills. Uh, there was nothing else that I could think of to pull out of this house to put in my car. There was no room anyway. And so, um, so I believe I left Gold Hill about 4 or 4.10, and I don't think these guys left until 5 or 5.10. Somewhere around there. It got a lot quieter once she left. Ha, ha, ha. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, let, well, let's talk about that car, Back to the Gills. What, what kind of things were in it? Well, coincidentally, um, now, what, what, what was, Cars. yeah. Uh, in what was packed in our car, coincidentally, what was packed in our car before we even started the evacuation process was all of the accoutrements that we needed to pull off a murder mystery at the Hotel Bull Dorado. Um, we, uh, I, that was a Monday, and the next Friday we were scheduled to do a murder mystery at the hotel. And um, I had said to David um, the day before, let's go ahead and pack up all of the murder mystery, the box, the costumes, everything that we need, so that we don't have to do it after Labor Day when we're going to be tired and, you know, blah, blah. So already in my car, 
was everything I needed for this murder mystery. That was a huge, amazing um, gift uh, because we were, in fact, able to do that show. Um, so then after that, uh, we went for my mother's paintings. My mother has done a series of paintings in the early 70s of pretty much Gold Hill and the surrounding mountains. Um, and it's a real historic record in, in a way of uh, wh what this town looked like in those early days. It's changed mm, somewhat uh, since then. So we got all the paintings. Um, all of my photo albums are over there in that case. So we got all the photo albums. And um, then I started kind of thinking, well, what, uh, what will I need for the next year? If my house burns down, what will I need for the next year? Or what will I be bummed that I didn't catch? Um, so I packed all of Dave's cowboy shirts. <laughs> and uh, because we have a significant amount of money invested in them. And I, I also packed all of my um, cowboy boots. I have a significant cowboy boot collection. Meanwhile, David was bright enough to pack a week's worth of clothes. When I got down after being evacuated, when I got down to Boulder, I had nothing to wear but cowboy boots and the clothes on my back <laughs> and Dave's cowboy shirts. Um, Dave, meanwhile, had a week's worth of clothes. <laughs> so um, I guess probably one of the funniest things that I packed was my vacuum cleaner. I can <laughs> let you <laughs> see my vacuum cleaner. Uh, I don't know, you know, it's not, you can see my house. It's not like I'm a neat freak. It's just that we had just purchased this vacuum cleaner and, um, and it just seemed like I didn't want to let it go. <laughs> Do you want to talk about your yeah. motorcycles? We've got water. <coughs> no, I'm good. I'm good. Okay. <coughs> okay. All right. Um, then, yeah, let's ask Dave. Dave, what did what did you take? Well, after we did the original, the initial packing of everything that was that we talked about, that was vital, financial records, the paintings, and things like that. I had always planned. I have two old motorcycles that I've had for one of which I bought in 1977. And uh, I've always planned, if there was time to take those, they're somewhat irreplaceable. So I told Maggie, I, once we loaded up her car with everything else, I said, I'm going to load the bikes now. And she said, okay. And the neighbor and I loaded them up. Well, the next day, we were telling this story to some of the other evacuees. And Maggie said, when I said that, that I was going to load up the motorcycles, she thought, well, we'll take an hour and a half to argue about it. Or it'll take five minutes for me to unload to load them up, and uh, I'm going to load them up anyway. So just let me do it, you know. As it turns out, so. Uh, <laughs> well, I mean, one of the caveats was we had already the weekend before we had filled the truck that would hold these motorcycles with old wood off the property. So in order to load the motorcycles, it wasn't like we were just going to load them into his truck. We had to unload all of this wood in order to get his motorcycles in there. Which doesn't take long when you're excited. Yeah, <laughs> and it didn't take us <laughs> long. We were excited. <laughs> a little bit. Yeah. Would you say there was a fair amount of adrenaline going on? More for, there was more adrenaline on her part than, than on mine. Uh, I was very calm, pretty much, I, I feel like, throughout the whole thing. Uh, Maggie was up and down a little bit. I had gone down, as soon as we saw the smoke, I had gone down and seen where the fire was. And at that time, it looked like it really wasn't coming this way. So, as it turned out, we had six hours after the evacuation before it actually came over the ridge. There was one little tendril that kept sneaking around to the west and finally came over the ridge. But uh, up till then, the entire fire had gone to the south and east. So we had hours and hours of time. And... Uh, I stayed until, my son and I stayed until it looked hopeless. You know, when it, when it came over the ridge a quarter mile wide and 100 feet high, it was time to go. <laughs> so mm -hmm. we got out pretty quick at that point. But even at that point, I don't think he and I were panicked because 
we had already discussed what we were going to do and uh, what what could possibly happen. So, you know, it played out pretty much the way we had talked about it. How about you, Maggie? What, what, describe your feelings. Um, my feelings, uh, well, well, for one thing, um, I, I do think there was a great deal of adrenaline running, th forcing through my body. And uh, the reason I think that is not so much at the time, I didn't think, I, I didn't feel like I was panicked. But the next morning I woke up and I was really sore um, from uh, carrying, you know, throwing, um, packing, um, and, you know, pulling things off the walls. And I realized, you know, and especially uh, in the unpacking process, now that we, we are, have, are back in our home, you know, trying to get everything back on the walls, back on the shelves, um, back, you know, in the in the closets. I realized, wow, we we grabbed a lot of stuff. <laughs> we got we grabbed <laughs> a lot of stuff, and of course, it's given me an excuse to say or to de demand that. The house has to be clean before we put all the books back on the shelves. You know, we have to do all the walls before we put all the paintings back. So it's been a big spring cleaning thing. Um, uh, and uh, I kind of wish I had some of that adrenaline that I experienced during the fire evacuation uh, to now, um, uh, you know, put it to use on my house. But uh, that's neither here nor there. Um, <laughs> um, that's another film. Yeah, that's yeah. another film. That, exactly. That's the Precisely. Story. Yeah. yeah. Well, let me ask you um, was there any mental process that you used um, to decide what, sh what you should take with you? As was there any mental process that you used? Was it. How did you decide what you were well, going to take with you? As far as what we take uh, in the case of a fire, we had discussed that over the years. The basics, the, the very basic things, like if you have 10 minutes, what do you take? Mm -hmm. Once again, that's financial records and the uh, you know passports and things like that, the photo albums and the paintings. And then after that, as we had time, then you start to expand that list, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, so the motorcycles were not in the first list. They were in the second list, you know, the second tier. That's what he says now. <laughs> <laughs> well, at least I, I, we took you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, how sweet. <laughs> and the dog, of course. We and the a, dog, yes. Have, you know, the, yeah. the animals are always important. Cause, Absolutely. You know, they count on you for everything. Absolutely. So she was in the first tier. Mm -hmm. and we also had, uh, um, you know, fortunately uh, taken sort of a picture of our, our computer, our hard drive, and put it on hard disk. So I was really thankful that, you know, all the discs for the Murder Mystery Theater Company, every, you know, all of uh, our written work, Dave has written 17 plays, uh, 17 murder mysteries, um, all of those were on disc. So those were really s simple to throw into a bag. We have a, a fire. Uh, fire box that holds all of our um, papers and you'd think well just leave that because it's fireproof but but we took that because it's a nice little suitcase and it's simple and it's handy and we know where it is um, and we took the computers of mm -hmm, course you know, mm -hmm. that's easy just unplug them and throw them in the car right and we took this little table um, <laughs> because it's uh, it's a replica of a table that my father built, and my father, in fact, built that table. He built a lot of the furniture here in the house. He used to be a furniture builder. Um, and so that was sort of a small, easy piece to take. But short of, you know, trying to decide, you know, should we take the couch, should we take um, uh, pieces of furniture, th th that There's was not in the question. picture. No. Yeah, yeah. Because how do you feel about the other furniture? It's just they're just things. Yes. You know, the other the stuff Can that be it doesn't replaced. have a uh, an emotional connection, you know, or a nostalgic connection. It just doesn't matter. It can be replaced. You know, right. Like a television is a television. But now um, another interesting thing is is less than a week later was the um, fire up at your mom's, <laughs> and what did you take for her? My mother six days six days after the fire here. here. I was on my way to Loveland, and I was passing by my mother's house, and there was a large fire a mile from her house. So in her case, uh, there are a lot of furnishings in her house that go back to my great-grandparents. So 
I had called my brother and we loaded up a lot of, you know, like my great grandmother's rocking chair and my grandfather, my grandfather's smoking stand and all these things like that. And of course, lots of photos and memorabilia. And, you know, many knickknacks from uh, Sweden that her mother had brought over and things like that. So that it was a very different evacuation for my mom. <laughs> um, had you lost that stuff in your mom's house, uh, what would that have meant to your family? Well, if the things that were in my mom's house had been destroyed, the, the nostalgic things, it would have been very heartbreaking. I'm very sentimental about things like that. I'm very conscious of my family history. I don't know as much about her side as I do about my father's side. But, you know, I really, I'm a big history buff, so I really like to have tangible links to the past whenever possible. Probably too much. I keep too much stuff. So, uh, it would have been very, you know, there are things that were over 100 years old in her house that had been on her side of the family for a very long time. So, that would have been tragic, especially yeah. for my mother, who is in her 70s now, yeah. but uh, for everyone. Okay. And, and Maggie, you know, same well, question for you about what, what would it have meant? What would it have meant if you lost this house? Those important things. Um, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Well, exactly. Um, the uh, kind of interesting thing is, is that when we evacuated from Gold Hill and went to Boulder, we went to my parents' home. Uh, where coincidentally we had an RV parked out in front. Um, so that's where we stayed uh, during the nine days of evacuation. Um, when David uh, did finally arrive, um, uh, and I was sitting in the living room with my mom and dad, um, he came in and he said, I think we lost the house. Um, I think it's all gone. Uh, he didn't know, but uh, uh, he was, based on what he and my son saw, when the fire roared over this mountain, it was, um, you know, everybody thought Gold Hill was gone. Um, and uh, I, I remember seeing my parents, my parents are both 89 years old, um, and uh, they're very with it. Um, and um, although they didn't say anything, I can, I remember seeing it sort of cross their face, we lost the Gold Hill house. And in my family, I'm an only child, and we have always talked about um, uh, never lose the matchless. We've always referred to this house as the matchless mine, um, the baby does matchless mine, never, never, never sell the matchless. Um, and so, uh, sort of in that fraction of a second that I saw it sort of the wave cross my parents um, psyche um, I, you know that's what went through my mind is uh, oh, we lost the matchless uh, we lost the thing that my family has always prided and, and um, put uh, put above almost everything else um, uh, we lost our, our little gem our little uh, piece of, of, of heaven um, and everything in it um, so, uh, well, not everything because we evacuated stuff, but, uh, yeah, that was, uh, that was kind of, um, what would we do, uh, if we had lost it? Um, we would probably resemble a lot of our friends who lost their homes. I mean, at this point, they are truly in mourning. They are shells of their former selves. Um, they, um, they are stunned and, um, they are, um, sort of, um, uh, confused and, um, emotionally battered. Um, and, um, I'm just thankful that, um, I, I, you know, I'm, I'm emotional enough and, uh, had we lost this, uh, I would, I would be having a very difficult time right now. I know I would be, um. shell-shocked and stunned. <coughs> right, right, right. So I have to ask you a question. So the fire comes roaring up here. What happened? How did it not hit your property? Well, the only reason in our house, there's basically four reasons our house is still standing. First of all, the, the work that my son and I and my neighbors did, mowing the meadow, we went like 100 feet out into the meadow, cutting the grass, which is waist high, 
Mm. Uh, the trees that were cut right behind our neighbor's house. And then three other factors. The, uh, the wind shifted a little bit. The uh, several fire trucks, the first we'd seen all day because they were everywhere else being overrun, came down the road and were wetting down houses. And then the first slurry bomber run of the day was right down behind our row of houses here. And in talking to, uh, and just minutes before it would have burned, when I left, I figured we had three to four minutes left before the fire reached our house. And it burned the trees within 20 feet here. Um, the first slurry bomber of the day was supposed to drop somewhere else. And the wind shifted, and he couldn't see his target because of the smoke. So he announced he was going to drop behind this row of houses here, which turns out to be our house. And he went right down behind Hill Street and made a perfect drop. Everything here was covered with slurry, which for a while was our favorite color. Kind of a you know maroon, sticky, mm -hmm. looked like Reddish. great jam on everything. Everything. So uh, those, those factors uh, really made a difference. Our wood pile caught on fire between our house and our neighbors. And the boys from Ward were over with, a, with one of our fire trucks, and they put that out. And we're what we call hot spotting, going around and putting out fires everywhere. So that's, that's the only reason. A little shift in the wind and uh, yeah. a little bit of luck. Yeah. Wow. Well, sounds like you did some good mitigation, too. Well, yeah. Last minute stuff. Uh -oh. <laughs> but better, th better to be doing something than to just stand there and watch. Right. Mm -hmm. Especially if you have the time, which we did. Yeah, we had every weed whacker, every... Um, uh, lawnmower, every anything that would cut grass. There were about six of them out there, you know, and we were just, uh, we've never done that before. So. Um, I, just want, I just have this picture of them all out there. <laughs> yeah. Well, we have pictures. Well, we do have pictures. We have photos. Yeah. <laughs> very yeah. Okay. So, um, your son was here. With you? Well, our son uh, at the time, he was planning to come up for the barbecue. Yeah. And, uh, but later, of course. Uh, he's away at school and he comes back every weekend to see his girlfriend. Uh, but when we saw the fire and realized there was going to be an evacuation, Maggie called him and uh, told him we needed his help right away. And of course, initially he tried to come up Sunshine, which was already closed, but we all know back ways in. So sure. he came around a different way and came up to, uh, to help us. So he was a great deal of help. We loaded up his car, Maggie's car, and my truck, and that was basically it. Um, what was there anything that your son uh, grabbed took? that, that you, you hadn't grabbed? Well, our son grabbed a box of uh, keepsakes that he had put thrown together. He went through his room and uh, grabbed certain things that meant a lot to him. I couldn't tell you what they were at this point. But uh, I know one of them was one of the, he and I built model rockets when he was a kid. I know he grabbed one of those because <laughs> I saw it sticking out of the box as he was leaving. But yeah, I don't know, baseball glove, things like that. Mm -hmm. you know. and, and he's got those all with him. None of them are here. Oh, they're here. They're back now. They're back oh, now. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe we can get a model rocket and a baseball glove. <laughs> As far as things we forgot, I don't think so. I think later when we came back, there are a few things that you looked at and you went, well, we probably should have taken that. But mm -hmm. at the time, we, we certainly weren't down there going, oh my gosh, we forgot this. Mm -hmm. One of the small tragedies of this is I, did rem I never wear my wedding ring because I do electrical work. Mm -hmm. I took it when I left and, and was wearing it everywhere, which I never do. And one day I went for a motorcycle ride uh, to come up for one thing to see what roads were open and I lost my ring it fell off because I never <laughs> I never wore it you know so I wasn't used to I didn't take it off because I wasn't thinking about it and when I got home from the ride it was gone so that's kind of a sideline you know and, and a yeah, small tragedy but uh, irreplaceable thing yeah I think we really got uh, most things just mostly because we had five hours or six hours to evacuate. And we had put some thought into and, it and in we the past. Had, yes, we had. Yeah. One yeah. of the funny things is, uh, and I don't remember who it was, uh, there was a couple that had a list on their refrigerator of everything that they would take and do in case of a fire. 
And when the evacuation came, the wife took the kids and threw them in the car and left and didn't do any of it. And the, the husband showed up later, you know, because once again, they had a lot of time and walking through the house realized that nothing had been taken. So, and which is, you know, it was wise on her, you know, life is more important than anything. Mm -hmm. But it was kind of funny that then he had to go through yeah. <laughs> with the list because she'd just blown the whole thing off. <laughs> well, you know, that, that was one of the things that we were talking about um, and, and that I'm curious about. Um, Although it doesn't sound like it happened to you guys, but, you know, what, did you lose your mind at any point, <laughs> or um, well, did you do something like that where you, you know, you thought you were all prepared and you just walked away from it? Was there any... Well, in our case, uh, we just had so much time yeah. that mm -hmm. uh, we did go back, you know, after the initial 15-minute load, we did think of things, mm -hmm. you know, uh, various small things, but we have friends who had literally five minutes yeah. it was coming up the driveway when they looked out the kitchen window yeah. you know and uh, you got to go now and uh, with the clothes on your back and that happened to several people just south of here what they call rim road the fire was going directly towards rim road mm -hmm. right away and jumping from treetop to treetop so the, and many of our friends who lost everything down there had to drive towards the fire to get out there's only one way out whereas gold hill there's four exits, which was one reason I was comfortable the whole time in staying, because we always knew that Lickskillet to the north, you could see from our house that the fire was nowhere near it, and there's always a good opening there. So, you know, I never felt like I was losing it. I mean, for a long time, I didn't think we were, it was going to come here. I was carefully watching the little finger that eventually did come over. We were watching it, and it, it uh, like I said, it took six hours to come over the ridge. Yeah. So uh, up until then, it seemed, it seemed like, you know, we may not have any problems. Mm -hmm. okay. um, did you guys have an actual list, or was it just kind of in your head? Our, our list was actually in our head. Um, we didn't, I, I don't, we never made a, a real list. And I'm no. not sure if we would still, I mean, again, we're sort of blessed by the fact that we live in an 800 square foot home. <laughs> you don't have um, a lot of stuff. Th there's, you know, <laughs> um, yeah. Um, so I think, I think we, uh, we got it all and we kind of knew what to get. And I don't think uh, any of us were panicked per se. Um, okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, Last question is, uh, do you think you've been changed at all by the whole experience? I don't think it's changed me at all. Um, I'm sorry, could you go back up? I don't think the evacuation okay, and all right. fire. I don't think the evacuation and fire has, has changed me at all. Um, I, if the house had burned, I think yes, very, very much differently. But unless you look out the back, you know, everything's still the same. Our home is still here. I wasn't even shocked when we came back because uh, at, at our area because I actually was, saw it burning, so I knew what that was going to look like. The drive-up sunshine was very moving, you know, to see all that because we'd gone out the other way. I was uh, amazed at the devastation down there. It was pretty impressive. But it's funny that... You don't actively feel traumatized, but mm -hmm. it took a little while to get back in gear when we came back. Mm -hmm. You know, things were kind of, you know, it was just kind of strange. And uh, it took a long time to get back into the normal swing of things. Would you agree with that, Maggie? Or Do I think it's changed me? Um, I, I'm sorry, I, I was talking yeah. over you when okay. you said that. Okay, I'm sorry. I, so, um, <laughs> do I think that this experience has changed me? Uh, I do think it has changed me um, uh, in, in very subtle ways. And uh, uh, um, I, uh, and, and I, I think as uh, time goes on, um, I, I guess it's colored my thinking. It's it's sort of um, put put, a, um, put some shades on um, how I do things and and what I you know how I, I function in my world. Um, as I said, the fire yesterday just really brought up more emotion 
than I uh, was at all prepared for. Um, it just sort of came out of the blue. And um, uh, I do think that I was traumatized uh, by the experience. Um, but I think one of the biggest traumas that I have felt and do f still feel is, is the loss of my friends. Um, uh, and uh, they talk about survivor's guilt, and um, I certainly think that I have, uh, I have that in spades. Um, I find myself um, pretty much every day trying to think of ways that I can help those people who, um, some of them didn't lose everything, but they, uh, their jobs were impacted. Uh, their uh, ability to exist in what is already a fairly financially challenging world um, uh, ha has been uh, affected. So I, um, I, whenever I go, I go to a lot of secondhand stores for, uh, to find costumes for our theater company. Whenever I go there, I see a piece of furniture and think, oh, well, you know, I'm going to go ahead and buy that for Katie or for um, my friend Kathy. Um, I find myself combing through my things, trying to find uh, pictures of my friend's children um, that they lost that I know if I can just make a copy of it, um, I can give it back to them. I find myself value, valuing um, things like pictures and friendships and um, uh, the stuff that you can't put a monetary value on um, greatly. And of course I thought, I, I think I valued them before, but not, not nearly as much as um, after the fire. BF and AF. <laughs> well, thank you.
one of the stranger things that we evacuated the day of the fire. Uh, we had planned a barbecue. So before we even saw the fire, I had started a couple of slabs of ribs intending because they have to be cooked for a long time at a low temperature to get those done so we could use the grill later. But when we were evacuated, I decided to uh, turn off the grill, disconnect the propane bottles, move them away from the house, you know, for safety. But as, as it became clear that uh, we had a lot of time, I fired the grill back up and continued cooking the ribs while we were cutting all the uh, grass and dropping trees back in here. And eventually when we evacuated, we evacuated the ribs with us. They were done by then and we had them for dinner down in Boulder that night. So it wasn't in the plan, but it worked out very well. Aging stuff, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that is. I knew what I meant. Are we in your shot? No, not yet. But perhaps I would like to have a. I don't know what you think about that. Uh, like uh, Dave walking and standing like right on a rock, just looking. Out that way. Like yeah, looking just like that way. Looking at the burn. What do you think? Yeah. Do you like that? Yeah. yeah. We can It'll use it, it or we can cut sure, it. Sure, I'll do. Do you it. mind? Yeah. You I just, just walk out there and look out that way. Yeah. I'm just gonna. Yep. Yeah, well that, showing us. yeah, and that gives us some perspective too. Just like like you meditating on what has happened. Yeah, just put your fist under your chin. <laughs> <laughs> I'm 
thinking. I don't know if I'll go for that. I'm All right. about it. <laughs> Look at this thing. And keep looking over there. Keep looking over there. built in the 70s. The difference between the historic Gulf Hill and this side is this was all built in the 70s, completely unregulated. One of the more interesting houses. You see the one with the red roof over there? It's kind of beige. It's, uh, you know, if you go from the dome, you go up and then to the right. It's got a little red roof. It's made of three wine barrels, giant oak three-story wine barrels. That are, that are arranged in a triangle and then they walled around it and built the interior. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah, it's a pretty cool house. All the rooms are round. <laughs> and they're oak. All the walls are oak. It does wow. sound like a 70s kind yeah. of house, yeah. doesn't it? Yeah, some airline pilot had it built, I think. Oh. Maggie, when she was a little girl, remembers them bringing the, the barrels case. up on yeah. big trucks. Oh, yeah. That's yeah, it's pretty funny. And the house right below it Sunshine was already closed. Yeah. This was closed. Yeah. West didn't look good. Lake Skill had dropped. It's that little one. Right. That, um, it dropped straight down yeah. in the left hand. The left, straight yeah. that way. Okay. That's and it was wide open and you could tell. Yeah. So I wasn't concerned, you know. And we had a real good view of where the fire was. So, you know, we knew it wasn't coming up behind us. Very historic. You said you were Oh, yeah, big job. That industrial building we went by was the mill for the cash mine, which is still, it, it was running up to last year. And they closed again and they're getting ready to reopen it again. So they're still mining gold up here. Sure, why not? Yeah, it's, it's the whole reason Boulder's here was to supply these towns. Right. Yeah, that's true. You know? I mean, it'd be here now. Yeah, I thought maybe next time I should go to Safeway instead of Whole Foods. Well, the yeah, Whole right. Was to get not to get our food, it was supposed to be for us. Yeah. But I think we can come back and bring them something. And don't we have to bring them a copy of the film? Or no? Yeah, that might. They might forget who we are by the time we get the film done. What? Really? <laughs> we're gonna get the money, honey. We're gonna get money. Listen, look at how far we've come and just the one silly idea and bam, we're here. Yeah. So we can get money. We gotta get some money. You know what? Boulder County Art Association is like paying our bills for us. Really? Mm -hmm. Wow, what a salary. Holy moly. I know. I didn't know what to put in it, so I put everything. <laughs> Something is really wrong with this picture. <laughs> Hopefully not. Nothing's wrong with the picture. No. Is that right? Who did that? Who did that? Who that? Like they do with their um, shirts. Well, that was me, girl. It was you? I put those in there. <laughs> 